mama left me now God know we must get better Now I wanna left me now God know we must get better the Court of Appeal has upheld the convictions of dancehall entertainer Vibes Cartel, Sean Campbell, Kahira Jones and Andre St. John for the 2011 murder of Clive Lizard Williams. The decision was handed down this morning. Cartel, whose given name is Adija Palmer, and his co-accused were convicted in 2014. The attorney for Adija Vibes Cartel, Palmer, Valerie Nita Robertson, says she is disappointed at the court's decision to dismiss his appeal Mrs. Nita Robinson says she was confident that the appeal could have been approved based on the grounds of her arguments put forward in the case. However, she says she'll be appealing to the UK-based Privy Council, which is Jamaica's highest appellate court. Uh, if you get leave, then you, you, you have to retain counsel um, to argue in the, um, the UK. In the UK, my concern now is having regard to the state of the United Kingdom with this COVID-19. We don't know when or the court will be up and running. But in any event, it would take um, a year or more. Meanwhile, attorney at law Bert Samuels has reacted to the decision by the Court of Appeal against his client, Sean Campbell, known as Sean Storm. Mr. Samuel says he and his team are disappointed. TVJ News caught up with him at his offices in St. Andrew. With all the experience I have, I'm still in shock because this is one of the strongest appeals I've ever argued in my 41-year career at the bar. This is why I'm encouraged that we will succeed at the next level. Sean Campbell had discussions with us. We broached to him the possibility, the remote possibility that we would have been turned down and he said in the unlikely event we should go to the Privy Council. So we don't have to consult with him now. What we need to do is to study the written judgment which we are trying to find on the internet and when we find that judgment we will see how the court managed to navigate through evidence like the geopositioning of his phone, Mr. Campbell's phone, in being in Portmore when the alleged offense is taking place in Havendale. And why would a man, knowing that he's guilty, go into the police on three occasions when he was called on the phone? He, he surrendered himself to the police. They detained him for two weeks. They released him. They detained him for a week. They released him. And finally, when they called him again, he went in. That is conduct totally consistent with his innocence. But as we've said, our day will come in the Privy Council, and the defense never rests. It's almost scandalous that we had to wait one year and eight months for this judgment. Um, we have had no reason yet why we waited so long, and I'm sure the written judgment will address that issue because the public opinion is that this has been too long. And justice delayed, we know what it is. And our reporter, Vashon Brown, was at the Court of Appeal and spoke to the Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, after the ruling. The Court of Appeal has spoken and it was a very complex matter with several legal issues. And I know both the prosecuting team and the defense team would have done extensive research and um, given very detailed submissions and uh, I believe that the Court of Appeal have rendered a judgment which will be a critical and seminal one given the nature of the legal issues in this jurisdiction and other Caribbean jurisdictions. Well, um, I am proud of my team. They worked very, very hard and many late nights and as in any other profession, whether you're a journalist, a doctor, or any other professional um, area of competence, when you work hard and you get the result, then, you know, that's always a positive. What does this say about the justice system? So many people say when we had the trial in 2014, the justice system itself was also on trial. Well, every now and again, and you know, we had that other matter that other hot matter recently 
you do have cases that come before the court that demands the utmost in transparency and it really puts the justice system on trial because there is a view somewhat misguided i think or misperceived let me use misperceived that some people are above the law there is a view that because of station in life or the fact that the person may be very wealthy or the person may be very famous or well known that somehow they are above the law they have obviously looking at sentencing because we argued that wrong yeah. that the sentence was excessive and so they are obviously looking at the sentence what the sentence that was passed I believe um, it was 35 years for Mr. Palmer, mm -hmm. and for the court case it was 25 years. So what are the government changes to the sentence? No, they, they are saying they wish us to submit to them okay, um, further information so that they can take a decision on what is the sentence that would be appropriate oh. um, in the circumstances. Oh. So, so they are particularly asking for time spent in custody. Yes. So we will have to send, we have seven days to send um, that material to them. And then you will hear the, 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 um, what the sentence is that they think is appropriate. What they will take into account, and then they will make a decision on that. Which is an indication that they have already agreed that it should be reduced, or they will they will be convinced by the argument um, they, I would say they have already agreed it should be reduced, but as to by how much, yes, it, it should be reduced, then it will depend on how long each person has been in custody. That seems to be the, the, the um, center of their um, decision, how long they have been in custody until trial. No, well, you know, it's it's a, we are on lockdown, COVID lockdown, so um, there is no way they are going to allow us in the prison. Um, but I, we will, Mr. Finch and I will communicate with him through the authorities, mm -hmm. and then we will um, take a decision on the matter. We actually have spoken to him already on the issue um, so we have an idea where we are going um, we, are, we were prepared for all eventualities as we are well aware we don't sit in the court of appeal um, so we have to wait on the on this decision so we have gotten it today and I believe Mr. Kingston is not here um, but we work together and I believe we'll be going to the Privy Council you, you, are, you, are you surprised by this decision? Um, no, the public pressure is such um, that there's a lot of negative for Vibes Cartel um, from certain persons and certain um, areas of the society. So we expected it. But personally and professionally, I can tell you, uh, my view, I was not in the trial. Remember that I did not do the trial, it was Mr. Finson. But when I read the transcripts, which were 10 volumes, it was my view that he did not get a fair trial. So we are confident in that and we will be pursuing that. Too early now to talk about the points you were having before the council. Well, um, the entire bundles, we have to prepare all the bundles, we have to go for leave. That's the first thing. Um, they are constitutional issues because you know fair trial is a constitutional issue so we will basically be arguing that again how do you expect that he will be informed of this decision well we his attorneys myself and mr Finch, will have to contact the the correctional institution and speak with the officers in charge there and then we will we could ask to speak to him by phone and they could just as we did a teleconference a while ago 
and then we'll inform him. But media being what it is, I'm sure he knows already. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, you are so welcome. If I might ask, um, QC, there have been concerns about his health. Yes. Um, is there anything that you, you could say about that in regards to his health condition and um, if this is something that you know could you possibly could put forward as a, if there are actually health concerns? Um the only way those health concerns can be used is had we been or at retrial been ordered and then we would have to go back before the court for bail oh. and certainly that would help us um but we especially mr finso follows up his condition and when he needs to be taken to the hospital he is taken it's not that he's being neglected um he can't be treated in the institution so you will know from time to time he's taken right. to an appropriate facility right. um, to receive whatever attention is needed. Okay. Any more questions? But people just want to understand what exactly this means now for him because they don't fully understand what that means, okay. what is next. Well, it, basically the court has said that they have, um, they are not allowing the appeal. It's a legal term, but basically it means he stays convicted of the offense of murder until any other court says otherwise. So that is why we would go to the Privy Council. As you know, the Privy Council is the highest court that we can appeal to. Um, and it's more or less the same process that we do here much more paperwork and we will have to retain um, council in England, in the UK, um, Queen's Council. Um, we have persons on standby, we have prepared for all of this. Okay, so if they have denied the appeal, what, what do you need the extra seven days for them? Okay, they have given us seven days to submit some papers. They give us a reasonable time because they know that there's a COVID shutdown right now and state of emergency. So. I, they have given us sufficient time to get matters, to get the matters before them. It's basically it, not anything great. And then we will hear from them again as to the sentence for each person separately. So the court of, it is possible that the court of appeal will reduce the sentence? Oh, that's a possibility. I think that is a real possibility. But where it relates to getting him off completely, you'll have to go to the Privy Council. Correct. Okay, thank you. But. It means to me, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the, um, the trial, it looks small to you, but to us as legal persons, the fact that they are looking at reducing it um, is something that inures to our benefit. Okay. So we will pursue that any, any in the usual vigor. Right. But any, any, any um, ideas, though, um, vibes seem to have been in, in, you know, positive about the, the possible outcome. Um, any particular reason why you would have... Yeah, I mean, would have been outside, 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 I mean, <laughs> he seemed almost certain. Yes. Well, listen, it's like everything in life. You face... Um, a situation which can have dire effect um, and you remain positive because positive is what carries you through. Um, to look, as I tweeted yesterday, um, you remain positive because the other options are just not what you... Not options. Yeah, they are not options. but. Frankly, I believe he was emboldened by the level of the representation in, and the grounds of appeal because we gave him copies and we still are of the view that they are good grounds. Yes. But we don't make those decisions. That's why we are lawyers. We argue until we get what we are satisfied with and, um, and or when we can't argue anymore.
with COVID, with COVID running rampant, do you have any ideas to say when that process with the Privy Council would even be able to begin? Ah, that's a very, very, very important question. But we have to go to the Court of Appeal here for leave. We just don't go up there. We have to go for leave. Mm -hmm. Here, so there's a intermediate stage before we get there. But sometimes it will take a year. There about it's not a quick process, and that's under regular circumstances. Yes, under regular circumstances, it's not a quick process. But of course, the UK is under so much stress now. We don't know when the courts will be up. Okay. What else? In a case like this, would you now confirm that it would be best if the Caribbean had their own courts so that we wouldn't have to go to the Privy Council? Oh, why did you ask me that question? <laughs> I don't believe many people agree with me and some um, attorneys certainly don't agree with me. We have had many arguments about this and it's not because our intellectual level um, in Jamaica or in the Caribbean is any less than anywhere else. We have brilliant jurists here. Um, and I have read a lot of judgments from the Caribbean Court of Appeal, and I have been kind of shifting my position towards the Caribbean Court of Appeal, um, Court of Justice. But right now, I still am in the arena of matters, criminal matters, going before the Privy Council. We have had um, experiences there. Um, we have been fully listened to. And one of the most important things um, is that there has been no bias. The, the Privy Council, they don't know who Vibes Cartel is. They don't know who Valvinita Roberts is. And frankly, they don't care either. So to me, um, our arguments are devoid of any bias. So you believe you'll get a fair trial at the Privy Council? I believe we will be listened to. Um, I believe the grounds are substantial. Um, and I believe most of all that no justice system can survive if we don't have fair trial. And that is where this team puts their emphasis. I was alarmed at how this trial proceeded and I believe all accused persons must get a fair trial. If a jury, having heard all the evidence and if the properly put before, before um, the jury and they take the that's, where it, that's where it rests. But I am not satisfied and that's my professional view and my personal view. I think I'd exhausted my question, but let's give me one more. Yes. You, you, I see you keep making reference to an unfair trial. Mm -hmm. Just explain for our listeners and our viewers one or two of the areas that you thought were particularly bad in terms of the unfair trial. Okay, um, luckily I refreshed my mind, my memory last night. Um, you know, there was a lot of text messages um, taken from phones, and one of the things that the evidence, the prosecution's evidence revealed, this is not defense witnesses, is that the phone from which these text messages were taken was placed um, in a locker by the police officer who received it and that the key for that locker was placed on top of the locker and that persons would have access to the phone. In addition to that, I believe that there were several days there was material on the phone um, on the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, um, maybe the 13th and the 14th, which indicated that the phone had been used. That is, somebody was handling the phone. Now, in those circumstances, you can delete, you can change context of messages, texts, you can add, so in, 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 in our view, the phone was compromised because you can manipulate that. And we didn't feel that that should have been left to the jury and the jury should have been made to rely on it. Yes. 
as is just one of the areas that um, I believe was important. Also, there was cell site um, records that indicated that when the witness said he was in a particular place, the cell site information showed he was over in Portland. In addition to that, at the time that it is said that this thing occurred, um, the, the hospital records show that Mr. Palmer was not in Higley. So, um, those are just a few I can remember, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of, there's a lot of material, including pre-trial um, publication, negative publications. I think you might, you the media might remember that there was some burning down of some digital wires or material, and it was being said that, you know, um, by the authorities who should have known better that it was linked to uh, the case, while the case was going on. Those are things that create prejudice and bias. And we believe that um, those would have impacted on the case. Thanks very much, Pastor. You are so welcome. Yes. Yes. I want to see if they put it up on the... Can you kind of ask it to hold your distrust and kind of keep back and make a hard call? Not gonna leave me now, God know we must get better. Not gonna leave me now, God know we must get better.